This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV. We are at Rasaki's restaurant here in North London. With me, I have super middleweight boxer. You're not a prospect anymore, are you? You're moving out. You're moving out that stage, aren't you? Trying to become a uh, contender, Coogan. Yeah, contender. Yeah. 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 So the ne next fight is for the uh, for the WBO European, yeah. which is a big step up, and um, I think it's the, it's the right time, and I want to take the opportunity with both hands. Definitely. Um, when you first come on the scene, obviously you was blowing away everyone in these first round stoppages and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And then um, you had a few rounds under your belt and, and a couple yeah. of t couple of tough fights. But then you were back to <laughs> what we knew you for in the first, yeah. in your last fight, yeah. uh, with a second round uh, KO. So uh, nice to get that back in. Without a doubt, the the, the power has always been there, but I've um, I've been guilty of of looking for the uh, for the stoppage too much. And everyone, everyone tells you that in boxing, but sometimes you just need to learn the hard way. And um, I did that against um, Sonko, and come through it and improved upon it. And um, I'll be, I'll be looking to implement on those improvements for this fight again. Well, Sonko's definitely getting his money's worth, isn't he? Because we just see him. He's against fighting Tom Baker on that bill as well. So uh, he's, uh, he must know the English boys inside out. Yeah, I, listen. He, he knows. He knows what he's. Uh, he knows what he's doing, and um, he can spoil fights, and um, he can he can survive those rounds. Um, I think Tom Baker would be a nice nice test for him. He's been looking very sharp in the gym. And he's he's very good at keeping um, his distance. So I think um, I think Tom Baker will be looking to get him out of there. Um, have you spoke to uh, Frank or anyone or Francis or anyone about who you'll be facing for this uh, for this vacant Euro uh, WBO European title? Um, to be honest with you, we're waiting on um, we're waiting on a couple of names. There was a there was a Belarusian um, that was seventeen and two, um, and he pulled out of the fight. He didn't he didn't he didn't want the fight. So it's a good sign that, that fighters are pulling out against me now. Um, so I'm, I'm sure it's going to be a, a stiff test and um, a decent opposition, and that's why I'm going to train hard and I'm going to be ready for whoever it is. Um, I understand that there was an offer made uh, for a fight with Callum Smith uh, not that long ago, recently, yeah. but um, for whatever reason that hasn't materialised. So, any thoughts on that, Frank? Yeah, well, to be honest with you, Coogan, the offer that was made was um, for less money than what I'm getting now. So, it seemed a bit silly, really. Um, whether it was a half-hearted offer or what, I don't know. But um, that fight, that's going to be a great fight in a, in a year's time. Yeah, that hopefully it's going to it's going to top a bill and, and really sort of create a bit of atmosphere. Like at the moment, it's an undercard fight. Like to be fair, um, it's it's not a it's not a massive fight at the moment um, outside of boxing. So um, yeah, in a year's time, I'll, I'll, I'd love that fight. If the money was right and the deal was right, is it something that you would have entertained now? Is it something you would have wanted now at this stage of your career? Me as a fighter, I, I want to fight tomorrow. Yeah. But I've got to listen to the likes of Mark Tibbs and Frank Warren that know the game and they know the business side. And um, your head's got to rule your heart. And um, I'm guilty, my heart rules my head. So I've got to listen to the, uh, I've got to, listen to the people that are sensible. Um, you're fighting, like I said, back at the Copper Box now. It's a f fantastic venue. I've not been there to see a fight. I've been there, like, I've visited it. Yeah. And it, it just you could tell from being in there that... Yeah. Come fight night, look, it's going to be good if it's packed out and at the Copper Box before it was packed out. So it uh, must be a buzz fight now. Yeah, unbelievable atmosphere. Um, I, I didn't expect it to be as good as what it was. A lot of people were talking about how good it was in the Olympics and um, I'd seen photos, but to sort of box in, in that atmosphere, it was um, it was pretty special. And um, I'm, I'm looking forward to fighting for a big title in front of all those people again. Um, the wise guy name was it stuck? Has it has it been perceived? Because I don't really. It's just Frank Bullion. I don't hear people going, "Yeah, I'm out with a wise guy tonight." And well, you you you'd never read it anyway, Coogan, because I'm never out. <laughs> well, I see. Oh, I see. Uh, I see the wise guy running or something, or in the gym. Oh, right. Do you get that? Have you heard that? Yeah, I've had that every now and then. But um, I'm I'm known by Frank Bullion, and the wise guy sort of comes about every now and then. But um, to be honest with you, yeah, Frank Bullion is my name. That's what I'm known as. Just, just talk me through the reason why you why you decided to be called that. Is it because you think you look like like Italian mafia? Coogan, it's nothing what I think. <laughs> I didn't even choose the name, but um, there there was a couple of slick uh, publicity guys that come up with it, and um, that's what we went with. And it, I think with the with the Italian background, and um, a lot of people say I, I look Italian, so it is stuck. What is your background? Just explain to me the, the, where the name Bullioni comes from. It's on my um, it's on my dad's side. Um, 
my dad's side's Italian and um, my mum's English. Um, so I'm, a, I'm about a quarter Italian, something like that. But um, unfortunately, I don't speak it. I just tend to eat the food. And um, I suppose that the, the values have, have come down. We, we're, we're a family unit and uh, we all stick together. You don't speak any Italian at all? No capisce l'italiano. You know a little bit. You must know a little bit. Did your dad speak it? No, my, dad's, my dad speaks a little bit. Um, but to be honest with you, it got lost. It got lost in the uh, through the generations. I went to Sicily about two years ago, and uh, it's a funny old place, especially if you're six foot five and black. Right? It's a funny. You get some funny old looks over there because <laughs> they think to themselves, like, because no, there's not anyone that looks like. <laughs> I went to Palermo, which is proper, do you know what I mean, right into Sicily, and it was, it's lovely, it's, it's very scenic, very very quiet in some places, but when you walk into somewhere, like these little off, off-key off restaurants, they they must look at me and think, oh, like, it must, you know what I mean, they think there's like something going to go down, if you know what I mean. Brave man, Coogan, brave man, and you, you made it back as well, so. I, test I went with my now ex-girlfriend. And uh, it was good. It was good. But like I said, when you did walk into somewhere, not in Palermo City, they're just whatever. It's probably loads of touristy type people. But yeah, I mean, to be, I, I've um, I've been to Sardinia a few times, and I've been to mainland Italy. Um, I haven't been to Sicily before, so news to me. But um, yeah, it's like it's like any country, I suppose. There's there's going to be amazing parts, and there's going to be bad parts. Yeah, funnily enough, any country I do go to, they just look at me anyway. They look at me in my own town. Do you know what I mean, Frank? Get to North London, and you're going to get the same looks. Yeah, to be honest, when I go, I'm in North London all the time. Obviously, I support Arsenal and blah blah blah. I do spend a little bit of time over here, but people just they just go, "That's that geezer off the fucking off YouTube." Yeah. Listen, you're you're a celebrity now, Coogan. So you you got that you got that air about you and that presence. And about celebrity, well, internet dude. Z, Z Lister. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Easy, Frank. Um, all right, well, listen, this is a lovely restaurant here. It looks a lovely restaurant. I'm not really, I don't know, I'm not going to eat. I'm on a no carb thing today, just today, no carbs. So. There's a bit of protein over there for you, Coogan. The food, the food was lovely here. It's the first time I've been in here, but I'll definitely be back. It's nice, healthy food, yeah. Lovely. All right, Frank, listen, we look forward to the 30th of November Live and Box Nation, Rock the Box 2. You're fighting for the vacant WBO uh, European title. So, yeah, it's all good for you. Lovely. Thanks, Coogan. And uh, look out for the Team Bullioni songs come uh, 30th of November. What's all that about? What's that? Oh, there'll be a few, Coogan. There'll be some good ones. Do you want to sing one now? I'll leave that to them. I'll leave that to them. But there's some, there's some good ones coming out. I think there's a few in the uh, BM, BM. So Do they sing that one like Walking in a Bullioni Wonderland? Do you get that one? Uh, they, they've got about three or four that they sing, but there's a couple of new additions that are, uh, yeah. that are pretty good as well, yeah. All right. We'll look forward to them. Right, this is Coogan Cassis with Frank Bullioni here at Versace's in North London for IFL TV. Thank you very much. <laughs>